Now, I know some of you are out shoveling snow today. <laughs> Good luck. I know some of you are blowing snow, you know, especially if you're up in Alaska. <laughs> you know, forget that shoveling. You know, some of you have gotten so bad in the ice that you're hiding inside the house because you ain't going out there to shovel nothing. <laughs> Matter of fact, you're looking to the warmth. I know some people, you know, they, they tend to skip it, you know, like especially Alaskans, you know, they're like, hey, winter, we're heading for Arizona. <laughs> and especially, you know, Alaskans, they'll even jump from Alaska over to Hawaii, you know, but to live, you know, a lot of times they'll do a six month kind of swap thing, maybe a little longer. Sometimes they'll live down in Arizona for quite a bit of time and still live in Alaska, you know, and they kind of do this dual kind of state thing. And it's a popular thing because a lot of Alaskans, it's really cold in Alaska. So they kind of get out of the dismal overcast and want to get down in the sunshine. But you know, God wants you to, do you see it coming? Bloom? <laughs> yeah, you know, right here, this little guy. See the bloom? You know, it's kind of red, you know, kind of put it up there, you know, you can see it a little better. Bloom where you're planted. God wants you to be a blossom. He really does. He wants you, wherever you are, in the snowbank, in the ice, in the cold, in the frigid north, or basking in the luxury of sunshine like I am. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> I have challenges too, trust me. I was talking about that on a video just right before recording this one. And it was about being crushed. It was like, oh man, if you only knew. <laughs> Whoa, I even was down to my toenails clinging, you know. But the reality of life is such that he wants you and God has made you into a planting of his to bloom where you're planted. To become a blossom that can inspire people. That's kind of why God put me right here, right now, in this moment, today. Because, you see, every day, I get up way before dark, you know, and I, I bring my plants out when it's warm enough that they can be up here with their blooms in January. Remember that. It's January. <laughs> Most people don't look for blooms in January, unless you're in California. Then you expect it. But anyways. It's kind of like an inspiring thing to me. It's like it helps to change people's mindsets. Maybe it's doing that for you, you know, to see a blossom and bloom and remember, hey, not only is Jesus coming, but so spring. Spring is coming. Yes, it's going to be a while. And in January, you still got February <laughs> and March and April. But you know what? Where I'm at, as I am, even though I know we still have some, probably some freezing weather still coming. I have a bloom. You see this? There's a little guy in there blooming away. And he's planted from seeds. As a matter of fact, here's two more seeds that are blooming and growing. Because what you do, where you are, as you are, the way you are, is you use the opportunities that God has given you, whatever they may be. If you have some sunshine, then you could adapt to making, like I did, a little greenhouse effect, you know, kind of putting some plastic and putting some, you know, a little square space, you know, and putting plants away, you know, at night, you know, and letting them get some sunshine, some rays in the days, you know, and, and putting them back before it gets too cold, you know. You could grow them, you know. I don't mean, you know, like some of you guys that are too carried away about some of your questionable growth. <laughs> I don't do that, sorry. <laughs> No, I like being in control of my brain, you know, no strain on the brain when it comes to that game, but when it comes to trusting in the Lord, I like looking at blossoms and recognizing that God is changing me and causing my life to blossom in a way that He wants, so that He could look down at my life and see progress. Because I'll admit, there are times I feel like, you know, this little mud puddle, you know, it's kind of like in the, between the seeds, you know, it's kind of like... I have to keep it moist, you know, and kind of, kind of squishy and mushy, you know, so that they'll grow. That's kind of like the way I feel sometimes. But as I am in that mushy state, notice the blossoming that's growing, the seedlings that are shooting up, they're sprouting. That's what you're like 
God wants your life to sprout up always, to resist the pull of gravity and to pull upward, to burst forth from the ground of where you're at, to even begin to stand up and to, you know, maybe you get frosted, you know, a little frost damage. Maybe you get, you know, kind of like some branches broke off at times. You might be trimmed once in a while, but hey, sooner or later you're going to bring forth, you know, blossoms like this. And you know what God wants to do? He wants to do it miraculously. He wants to do it on a day when no one expects to see blossoms. You know, like in January. Well, your life is like that. Januarys will come in your life when you really shouldn't be happy because, you know, you lost your job, you lost your election, you lost your selection, you lost your reason you think to, you know, go on, you lost your whatever may be that you lost. But you didn't lose your life. <laughs> you're still here. <laughs> so you bloom where you're planted. Because the reality of what God has done is that He's showing you that you can influence everyone around you just by being who you are. His planting. His choice. His purpose that He's designed you to be where you are right now, today. Well, I'm sure these plants don't think of it, you know, when the cold comes, it's being like, hey, I'm thrilled, I'm going to grow up to be a big giant plant. They never see themselves growing up to be these things. But you know, all my plantings, everything that you see here has come from real challenges. Even as my life and the fact of where I am today has been brought about by huge challenges that most people would not face and survive. And God has brought me this far, I know he'll take me the rest of the way. And that's the truth about you. If God has brought you to this moment and you're alive and breathing and watching this video, hey, praise the Lord, guess what? We're going to make it. You may not think so, but spring is coming. And so is Jesus. So don't be surprised and don't be dissatisfied with where you're at today. Oh, it may feel a little you know, like turmoil, like maybe you're being made into potash, you know, or you're being made into some kind of like, you know, soil and you're mixing in some fertilizer. And right now you're stinking, you know, because you got all this sin in your life. But God is working it. You know, He's going to mix it all up and kind of, you know, get some of that junk out, you know, and kind of clean you up some, you know. Eventually, you know, plants a seed in you, you know, and it's going to sprout. You just got to be about what God is involved in, which is growing you up. And then as you grow up, you'll see that these plants all tend to help each other out, believe it or not. Each plant has a certain amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide that it gives off, as well as provides shade and warmth back and forth to each other. So the more plants you have together of a variety, believe it or not, it helps them to grow. It's amazing in my little greenhouse how these plants seem to warm up the entire little area. Oh, sure, it's oxygen stuff, you know, and it's kind of like blocked off in the cold. I just have to put a heater in there every now and then, but the point being is that church is like a hothouse. It's meant to protect you, to guide you, to help you, to provide light, to provide a growing environment for you to grow up so that when you come out of the hothouse, you're able to endure the environment that you're in. That's what I have to do with these plants. You can't see down that way, but I have to take all those plants down that way as well as all these behind me. Most nights, almost every night, I have to take them down when it gets sub down. Now, if it's 40, I'll leave them out and risk it, but most of them, yep, haul them in and haul them out. But you see, that's kind of what God does in your life, too. He's been hauling you around a lot more than you know. Your circumstances, I'll bet, are not the same. You're not exactly where you were 10 years ago. Yeah, at least I hope not. That would be a shock. That would be a miracle. But I think that you've been transplanted several times. I think life circumstances has moved you around a lot. And that right now, you're probably facing winters that are like really challenging. And you've gone through quite a few of them that have been really devastating. And now you're just like, the only thing you got left is this little kind of container, you know, and you're like, man, I remember when I was one big giant plant, now I'm just a little seedling. Welcome to the real world. That's what God wants us to always be like, seedlings so that we would 
sprout up because the first time you see that seedling put out its first bud, you get all excited. And sometimes you have to return to that. You have to return to that first sprout, you know, that first time that you just opened up to the sun and you just, ah, wow, check it out. Spring is here. Look at the blossom. It just burst forth with color and joy. And that's what returning to your first love is a lot like. Jesus wants you to blossom right now in January, in the time, whatever it is that you see this video, February, March, April, May, June, July, but mostly if it's in the dead of winter. Your life can be the blossoming of God's purpose for someone else besides yourself, that they may enjoy what it is that God is doing in your life for their purpose to find out why you could be so happy in the midst of a time when you should be so sad. Because that's really where the rubber meets the road when it comes to being a Christian. It's easy to, you know, plant seeds in the summer, you know, and stick them out in the sun, throw a lot of water on them, and watch them grow. They'll just shoot, shoot right up, you know, just drown them and frown on them, and man, they just take off like banshees. But you know, it takes a little more care to grow things like that in the winter. It's a little more challenge to know when, how, and why God is doing what he's doing with you today. Now, I don't know what that is. I know for me, I kind of like being where I'm at. Because I've already figured out that what I can do, blossoms. What I can't do, dies. <laughs> and man... When you've got something in your life that dies, whoo-wee, time to get it out of your life because it's stinking. <laughs> Boy, doesn't it? So, don't be surprised if you get pruned, you know, as spring comes. Don't be surprised if during the winter you get kind of like frost damage some because you didn't go inside and get protected, you know, like going to church or getting inside the hothouse. Don't be surprised if you, you know, kind of like have to start over again with your seedling, you know, phase, you know, that you got to return to your first love and, you know, kind of open up your eyes and blossom forth one more time to the joy of what God can do when he gives his grace upon you, he shines his countenance so that you can grow and become all that you were meant to be. This thing called life isn't just about going to work. <laughs> That's easy. I told somebody one time, they said, man, this is... You know, this ministry thing, you know, I said, you know, what is it about ministry? I said, ministry's tough. I said, you're accountable to God. I said, work, going to work is easy. You just go to work and do what they tell you. That's easy. Do your job, man. But ministry, you have to be ministered to and ministered. You have to be fed and filled. You have to be allowed to be used as God would choose to use you, which sometimes can mean that he makes you into a planter rather than a plant. Sometimes he makes you into a the crushed dirt instead of, you know, the growth that you thought you were. Sometimes he moves you here or moves you there or does whatever. Sometimes <laughs> you have no idea what he's doing. And that's a joy. Because then it makes life exciting. It makes life worth living because then you can trust in God as you see how he works in your life. Because you should be able to look back over your garden and see how it grows. The same way you should be able to look back over your life and see how God has grown you. The two, believe it or not, are very strongly connected in the scriptures. Jesus used the word of God as the seed and demonstrated how it grows and how it's used in a person's life to change them and to cause them to know God in a personal and intimate way. If you haven't tried it, I would say to you personally, get yourself a little garden, somehow. You know, even if it's just one little pot and you're going to grow in a window or you're going to grow in your bedroom, whatever it is, just grow something. Try growing something once. And then try to apply it to your life and ask God to apply it to your life. And I think you'll get a great learning lesson from just trying to grow something once. Now, some of you go out and grow a garden. But remember, you are planting in the Lord. God is growing you up the same way that you're growing that plant up. 